Thank you. After listening to Chandru and <coughs> and I'm sure after having what Jayati and Paranjay would have spoken, there's very little for me to add. So therefore, I'll only give a political input to this <laughs> that I'm here as a party which strongly opposes this move on two grounds. One, it destabilizes the Central Bank of India. And as somebody put it, it's no longer the Reserve Bank of India, it's only the Bank of India. The Reserve is gone. So, so, so that is, and, and that is in a situation of global uh, uh, vulnerability that India faces and the continuing recession in the global economy, the entire analysis and talks of once again another round of financial instability that is bound to occur in the world financial markets, the insulation against it, the insurance against it is our central bank and its resilience. I think having brought it down to the lowest possible ratio of what even the Bimal Jalan committee recommended of 5 to 6.5%, now you're at the 5% ratio. Now, this is, I think, uh, when playing around with our economy, exposing us to further vulnerabilities and which is likely to hit sooner than later from the international economic uh, trends. So that is one, uh, <coughs> uh, one reason. The second is that Ch Chandru had explained, I mean, what for has this been done and why it's all going to fail? and it's unlikely to succeed even from their perspective of how they want to infuse larger credit. And this has been a complaint that has been made by the Indian big corporates time and again, that we need, we have to go to a consortium of banks and negotiate with various banks. Therefore, merger will be a good idea. And that is also the Basel II norms. So you bring in a, a, a larger bank so that we don't have to go through this hassle. <laughs> but the problem is not the hassle for the investors or the co corporates. The problem is the volume of credit that they have <clears throat> will take, the capacity to repay back. That capacity as what has been falling in the last five years of this uh, government. We've seen our NPAs grow by fourfold, I think, more than that. If, if, uh, uh, and, and this is over and above 5.5 lakh crores of loans that have been written off. So the question is not of making available the credit for them to take it, but the question of that, that credit that they take should to be profitable for them. And that cannot happen, as has been explained in the infrastructure sector, which is exactly what India requires and Indian economy requires today. This is uh, one aspect of it. The other thing is that today, look at the Indian economy. It's not a slowdown in my opinion, but we are on the brink of a res recession. It is already, it's, it's already, I think, set in. Economists would be able to t tell it by, in a better way. Uh, but it, that recession has set in, the large scale job losses. India is a country that lives on chai biscuit. If Britannia is saying the five rupee packet biscuit is not being sold, I mean, you imagine the depth of the, uh, the the crisis that is there. And with textiles, the largest employer after agriculture, it's, uh, about, I mean, about their estimates are now about 10 lakh people have already lost their jobs. Auto sector, all of us know. If this is the state of the economy today, what is required is a large scale investments, public investments that will put back some, I mean, create jobs and put back some purchasing power in the hands of the people. Domestic demand is our basic problem. And I remember in Parliament always when this discussion would come up, successive finance ministers would say that I am a Keynesian fundamentalist. And I would turn back and tell them it's better than being a fiscal fundamentalist. <laughs> and then what you are doing is, is just this fiscal fundamentalism. And what is required is to boost domestic demand. Now this makes sense even in the uh, international economic atmosphere where world Trade is shrinking. Our exports in the last five years have fallen by minus 36 percent or so. And if that is the situation, unless we focus on our domestic economy and boosting domestic demand, there is no way, forget a fight in economy, but there is no way in which we can even recover from the present slowdown and the recession that we have entered into. Now, how can this be done? 
with one way in which, and that has been said already, the only way in which it can be done is through a big, big uh, public investments putting into building our infrastructure. Now this, how you do it, with the banks giving the money to your developmental banks or through some other agencies, whatever be the route, the fact of the matter remains that you require big public investments to generate jobs, build a much needed infrastructure and to bolster domestic demand and that is the only way out. By what they have done with the bank mergers and this reserve bank's uh, reserve or surplus funds, I don't think this objective can be, will be fulfilled. On the contrary, it will make it easier for credit to be given to corporates who will again default, again mounting NPAs. And as Chandra was saying, the final option would be whether the government should step in to put in a large in, uh, in, uh, infusion of uh, capital to save these banks, to save us from a domestic financial disaster. So the net result is, A, it is counterproductive. B, greater insecurities for our entire financial system. C, that, that it doesn't serve the purpose of what is required for our economy to be kick-started again. And D, what is worse, it can only lead to higher levels of crony capitalism. And that is what is what we can see in the prescription here. So in this, uh, in this situation, the... Uh, Reserve Bank of India has been asking the commercial banks to maintain a ratio of 9%, while the Basel norm is only 8%. They say you do not cross the Basel norm. But they have themselves now brought it down to 5% for themselves. Now this is a very, very serious matter. And I think this is going to make us more vulnerable. And at a time when you can least effort to be more vulnerable, both to international shocks and to our own domestic uh, yeah. situation, I think this was a move out of desperation with the hope that it will generate greater access to credit and therefore greater investments and therefore growth etc. But the reverse is happening and I am afraid that the reverse will continue to happen and with accompanied by a more compounded crisis in our financial system. That's why I think this is uh, something we have opposed it very firmly and we will continue to do so whenever the parliament meets again. But unfortunately in the parliament there are no discussions nowadays. It is, it is, it is what uh, I have uh, termed as the tyranny of the majority. So it is the tyranny of the majority that takes place so there is no meaningful discussion. But anyway, the attempt will be there but I think this is a disastrous move. Both these put together, RBI and the mergers. And what is worse is the Prime Minister talks in terms of financial inclusion of our people. Saying that everybody will be included unless you have your bank accounts. I mean, nothing flows now, including your subsidies, whatever they get, unless you have your bank account. Now, already in the earlier mergers, I think more than 2,000 banks in rural India have been closed down. These mergers will lead to larger closure of banks and most, I mean definitely, it will be in rural India. It will lead to financial exclusion rather than financial inclusion. And that would mean a much greater disaster that we are in for. So these are the uh, reasons. A, greater uncertainties and exposure to uh, international uh, headwinds or uh, crisis or instabilities. Secondly, it doesn't serve the purpose for which they are uh, said that they are, going, they are doing this. And thirdly, I think it only increases our uh, vulnerabilities and does not solve any of the current problems that we are facing. And in no way will this help in any case to kickstart the economy again, which the government is tom-toming about. So I think for all these reasons, we think it was a disastrous move and will continue to oppose. Thank you.